hello all of you welcome to the fifth class for non resident and today we will do problems for special incomes for special people which are taxable at special rate for non residents and whatever i am teaching in today's class it is like mandatory yesterday we have already completed section 115 sports person wala like ha huh? so for that we have seen that if a person is a sports person or if he is an entertainer okay singer musician and all then under section 115 bba he will get three kind of income as a sports person or sports association one is by playing tournament another is by advertisement and third is by being a special editor okay so in all these cases whatever income he is getting that is taxable at 20% and tds is deducted in 194e along with 20% 4% ess now question is should this person file the return of income in india answer is no if he is just having these income which are covered under section 115 bba apart from this if this non resident sportsman or entertainer he is having any other income say casual income hai lottery hai in that case though tds is deducted 30% with ess for nri is always when you deduct tds it's with ess but still they will have to file the return of income and because these incomes are taxable flat at 20% no chapter 6a deductions are allowed no business head deductions from 28 to 44c or kuch bhi available nahi hai theek hai right so related to this very nice problems we have done yesterday and i think i gave some homeworks also can anyone let me know what was the homework yesterday we did problem number 22 in class and we did 23 also 23 bhi ho gaya tha did we do 24 no we didn't do and 25th i gave as homework 25th 6th is related to business connection i will take it yes sure one second yeah this was homework and this we'll keep it pending now and because it's business connection sure i'll revise business connection and take up more problems also okay right now let us do one thing yes question number 25 was homework exactly that if the players are having income in the foreign country how much tax they should pay so here he is a tennis player and is a spanish citizen and he comes to india in a tournament and he wins a prize of 15 lakhs he also contributes an article in the newspaper 1 lakh he also paid for the ad although his expenses in india were met by sponsors he had to incur 3 lakhs so no expenditure is allowed he is a non resident what would be his tax liability and is he required to file the return so 15 plus 5 plus 1 what is your answer i'm to checking the homework it's a very nice question exactly same and easier than what we have done in class yesterday for the foreign cricketer 22 and 23 then i'll teach you some more sections and some more problems we are doing today tomorrow i think we'll be able to complete and tomorrow please read and come i'll be revising the residential status and business connection again as some of you want revision hai na theek hai 25th ka answer kitna hai bolo type and send me the answer 15 lakhs is the income for tournament yes please send it whatever it is no problem one problem given as homework it will not take more than 3 to 5 minutes but when you do it on your own without a teacher's reading and explanation you know that you have done it 15 plus 5 lakhs he got from the advertisement 1 lakh he got from the newspaper so that comes to 21 lakh ओके तो अब ये जो ट्वेंटी वन लैक्स है ओके चलो चेक योर आंसर्स 
on these 21 lakhs, they said how much tax he is required to pay 20% and on that 4% surcharge. So can we all calculate on this 21 lakhs? 20% tax is coming to 4,20,000 into 104%. So correct answer is 4,36,800 is the tax this NRI sportsman has to pay in India. And is he required to file the return of income? Answer is no. Because he is having only this income, 115 BA. Section 115 BA ka AK income hai. Or TDS deduct to 194. Email. Check and tell me, is this clear to all of you? Yeah, those who have got little different answer, absolutely no problem. Whatever you have done and whatever is my explanation, check. And if there is any conflict in your mind, put it in the chat box. Can you share what mistake you have done? Okay, no problem. Three types of income sportsmen will get. Okay, very nice logic that 5 lakh is the advertisement which is not related to sports. That's true. But whatever advertisement they do in India may be related to sports or may not be related. If they get income, that is taxable. Nice, nice. See, that's why I give as homework. You might have some different view. So, exam mein risk lene se achha, yehi le lo. Ye dekho. Section 115 BBA. Non-resident sportsman or entertainer, income by way of participation in India, in any of the game or sports, advertisement, any advertisement. Did they say that because he is a sportsman, advertisement should always be related to sports only or SI hona chi or ye kya apko bola? No, no, no problem. Any advertisement, participation in any tour or uh, tournament, and contribution of articles relating to games and sports in the newspaper. And here, sports association, and so they are guaranteed paying the income, getting the income. Then whatever, match referee is not considered a sportsman. So yesterday in one problem, we saw that he is paying tax in routine. Match ke jo referee hai, routine mein tax pay kar rahe. Okay. Yesterday I covered up for all of you this also. 115C to 115I. Hmm? If an NRI or uh, anyone from outside India has invested in India in convertible foreign exchange. Okay. Non-resident Indian he should be. NRI has invested in the foreign exchange in convertible foreign exchange. And when he has invested in specified asset being shares, debentures, deposit, government securities, could be. Then whatever investment income he gets, 20% is the tax payable. Long-term capital gain, 10% is the tax payable. Okay? Right. And 115F says that if you are an NRI, you have invested in the shares and all in India. And against this, you have, um, you know, purchased the shares and you have sold the shares and with the same money, again, you have purchased another shares debentures. Then till the amount you invest, you get section 115F may exemption. Capital gain into cost of acquisition by net consideration. If full amount is invested, full whole exemption you will get. But if part is invested, partly you will get. And listen, you have sold the shares, you have purchased another shares and debentures. These purchased shares and debentures, you should not sell it for the upcoming three years. Is this clear to all of you? The scheme is optional. Other than this, all the other income will be taxable in routine. For this, we have worked out two, three good problems also. TDS important rates I will discuss tomorrow. Ye bhi kal karenge, miscellaneous uh, recovery.
have already uploaded the revision lecture for DTAA for the upcoming Sunday's exam. Hope you are checking that. That is in YouTube. Okay. Revision lectures will be in the revision folder in YouTube. And next, I'll be uploading equalization levy. Both these topics are covered in upcoming exam. Every student should write the exam. Now let us take up 24th question. Charlie Limited. Okay. A company incorporated in Australia entered into agreement with Chaplin Indian Company for rendering technical services for setting up plant and machinery and all. Okay. Right. Now, as per agreement, Charlie Limited rendered both offshore services and onshore. Hmm. So, company has worked offshore, matlab, apne country se bhi kaam kiya, aur yahan pe bhi kaam kiya, right? So, they have paid the tax in both. I mean, say they have done the work both, offshore and onshore. So, they have rendered the service offshore. Offshore matlab, 1 crore service is rendered from Australia. 1.5 crore is rendered in Hyderabad. Charlie Limited is of the view that it is not liable in respect of the fee 1 crore. They themselves are from Australia and they have earned this visa in Australia. Is the view of Charlie Limited correct? Now, this is again going back to your routine, you know, residential status and all. So, when you are getting royalty or fee for technical service or interest, that money or that service should be in India. So, is he providing service for India? Yes. So, if you are providing service for India but related to this Indian service, half of the work you are doing in home country doesn't make a difference. Deko, simple. I told to an NRI, you make a bended pipe and deliver me in Hyderabad. Is the NRI rendering me service in Hyderabad? Yeah. But what he does, Bended pipe ready, Australia se hi bana ke leke aate. And then here they come and they install. So can they say whatever income is related to making of bended pipe that you have paid in Australia, we will not pay tax in India. No, that bended pipe which is ready got from Australia and the hooks and nuts and bolts and bearings with which I will erect it in India, all that is services rendered in Hyderabad in India. Hai na? So, on full income taxes payable. Okay. What I am discussing now, answer is there in section 9. Indian government rent giving payment to anywhere in the world, taxable in India. Resident paying to non-resident for services rendered in India, taxable in India. Resident paying to non-resident for its project outside India, Thailand, Singapore, not taxable. Resident Rendering service, sorry, non-resident, rendering service in India, taxable. One non-resident, non rendering service to another non-resident in their home country, not taxable. Ye sab aapko section 9 mein bataya hai, to exactly waisa hi hai ye. Okay, right. Chalo, let us take it now. You can write the answer. Okay, I'll make you write in the notebook itself. Problem number 24. As per point number one, section nine. I'm dictating the way you have to write answer in exam. Just write it very quickly. As per section 9.
Okay. As per section 9, non-resident. Who is non-resident? Charlie Limited. Incorporated in Australia. Non-resident. Charlie Limited. Is rendering service in India. As per section 9, non resident Charlie Limited is rendering the service in India. Correct a second. Even though rupees one crore worth, even though rupees one crore worth work is done, one crore worth work is done in home country. Australia. Still, all services are rendered in India. Hence, one crore plus one point five crore, two point five crore. 2.5 crore service Pura India mein taxable ho jayega. Will be taxable in India. Are you getting? So what is the last line conclusion you have joined? Is the Charlie Limited view is correct? No. Therefore, view of Charlie Limited is not correct. Charlie Limited ka view bilkul bhi correct nahi hai. Theek hai na? Chalo. Next now we will do And he has to pay the tax in India. Puri amount. Okay. Chal. We'll do one more section which is very important. It's a big list of too many sections. All the schemes are mandatory. And there is nowhere we have covered up 115 BBA and this. Right now I am doing FIIs. Foreign institutional investors. You know, FIIs are uh, like the in bulk, they will invest in India and specified funds, funds which have got permission in category one, two and all. Some kind of fund, you remember. So when FIIs and specified funds, they invest in India and they have earned income on securities other than units referred in 115 AB. And they have also got short term and long term capital. Now, India may invest ki so regular income bhi aega, short term, long term capital gain bhi aega. So dekho how it's going to be taxable. Okay. And we will do problems also related to this. 115 AD. Hmm. Income on securities is there. And other. So now, if there is long term capital gain under 111A, Jampe STT charged hai, lik do, agar STT charged hai, to kitna tax lagega? 15%. Other, other than that, jo apka uh, short term capital gain hai, uspe kitna tax lagega? 30%. Okay? Because it's a foreign institutional investors. So you can't say it's an individual, hence no slab rates. 
सो शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन ऑन शेयर जो लिस्टेड है और जिसपे एस टी टी डिडक्ट हुआ है वो कितना है फिफ्टीन परसेंट अदर शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन थर्टी परसेंट लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन कितना है टेन परसेंट और अदर इनकम जो भी है एफ एफ आई इसकी स्पेसिफाइड फंड के अदर इनकम टेन परसेंट अदर इनकम एफ आई आई इसकी जो है वॉट इज एफ आई आई फॉरन इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर उनकी जो बाकी इनकम है दैट इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट एंड अदर देन दिस वन इंटरेस्ट इनकम इज देयर यू नो एन आर आई इज और फॉरन इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स एंड स्पेसिफाइड फंड वेन दे कम टू इंडिया एंड दे इन्वेस्ट इन रूपी डिनोमिनेटेड बॉन्ड्स सो दीज रूपी डिनोमिनेटेड बॉन्ड्स आर स्पेसिफिकली गिवन टू अट्रैक्ट द एन आर आईज एंड ह्योर इंटरेस्ट इज वॉट एवर दे आर गेटिंग is taxable at 5% and 5% tds is also deducted under 194 ld okay no other expenditure is allowed chapter 6a deductions are not allowed okay and there is no requirement to furnish the return okay why there is generally no requirement to there is requirement sorry huh? there is not no रिक्वायरमेंट टू फर्निश द रिटर्न बिकॉज ही गॉट सो मेनी काइंड ऑफ इनकम और सब में तो टी डी एस डिडक्ट नहीं होगा फिर से एक बार हु हैव गॉट इनकम फ्रॉम इंडिया एफ आई आई क्यू आई बी क्वालिफाइड इन्वेस्टर्स फंड फॉरन इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स एंड स्पेसिफाइड फंड सो रेगुलर इनकम दे विल गेट एंड कैपिटल गेन दे विल गेट शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन है तो फिफ्टीन परसेंट जिस पे एस टी टी लग रहा है अदर शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन है तो थर्टी परसेंट लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन है तो टेन परसेंट अदर इनकम है तो ट्वेंटी परसेंट स्पेसिफाइड फंड टेन परसेंट आई नो लिटिल थोड़ा अलग है बट ये आपको अभी याद रखना पड़ेगा यहाँ पे एक और याद रखो बिकॉज दे आर डीलिंग विथ लॉन्ग टर्म शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन एंड ऑन राइट डाउन हाइएस्ट सर एप्लीकेबल इज फिफ्टीन परसेंट हाइएस्ट सरचार्ज एप्लीकेबल इज फिफ्टीन परसेंट यू रिमेम्बर ऑन लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन डिविडेंड इनकम ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट एंड थर्टी सेवन परसेंट हाइएस्ट रेट ऑफ सरचार्ज आर नॉट एप्लीकेबल और अगर इसमें लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन इज अंडर सेक्शन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेल्व ए तो टेन परसेंट अब वन लैख वन लैख का यू विल गेट द एक्सेंशन बट नो बेसिक एक्सेंशन एंड ऑल दिस इज मैंन यू प्लीज राइट ऑन टॉप मैंडेटरी सेक्शन मतलब ये ऐसे ही कैलकुलेट करना है नो बेसिक एक्सेंशन इन दिस इनकम मैम कैन यू गिव टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड बेसिक एक्सेंशन बिल्कुल नहीं मिलेगा आर यू ऑल फॉलोइंग तो हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन बीबीए स्पोर्ट्स मैन इज ओवर now 115 ad specified foreign institutional investors and all if they have got income in india how they are going to pay the tax even chapter 6a deductions that is atc to ata wo sab nahi milta so let us work out problems for this This one is over long term capital gain. Ajay ka ho gaya hai problem. Rupee denominated bond is always taxable at five percent and TDS is also deducted for the same. Twenty eight problem I want to take now. There are two varieties of problems, dear students, which are repeatedly asked in this chapter. One is what we did yesterday, sportsmen, and another is this foreign institutional investors. They go. Meher is a notified foreign institutional investor deriving the following incomes. Okay, so what is the first income they have got? इनकम एंड रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ सिक्योरिटीज ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक्स एक्सपेंसिस रिलेटेड टू सिक्योरिटीज वट एवर इनकम यू गेट इट विल बी टैक्सेबल एट ट्वेंटी परसेंट लेकिन आपको कोई एक्सपेंस का डिडक्शन नहीं मिलेगा 
reading the problem is very important dear students because they have got so many kind of income here thoda bada problem hai but acha hai fis ka hai i have told you all the tax rate let us do together two three problems like this and it will be a good practice okay so first is income on securities which is definitely taxable expenses are not allowed in this 16 lakh rupees is the uh, dividend from indian company on invested in rupee denominated bond so this is going to be taxable at 5% remaining all is going to be taxable at 20% long term capital gain hai 15th march ko kuch sale kiye hain securities aur purchase kiye hain so this will be taxed at long term this will be taxed at 10% short term if they are listed and stt is paid 15% if not listed and stt is not paid then 30% compute the tax okay and as per the provisions of act assuming that no other income is derived by the meher let us do it in the notebook for simple just go on making the list ki ye income taxable ho jayega are you all following the class 115 ad if you want to refer the section 115 ad yeah very easy 28 29 30 all the kind of problems are exactly same what we have been doing problem number 28 this two minutes i'll reduce the ac aap log shuru karo column particular amount of Thank you for waiting. चलो शुरू करते हैं सो दिस टाइम आई वॉन्ट ऑल ऑफ यू टू प्लीज राइट हेयर रेफर सेक्शन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन ए डी विच इज फॉर फॉरन इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स हु आर लाइबल टू पे द टैक्स इन इंडिया ओके particulars and column let us start first is income on securities so that will be like investment income how much is the investment income 25 lakhs expenses are not allowed and in investment income 16 lakhs is rupee denominated bonds rupee denominated bonds ka interest rupee denominated bond interest how much it is 16 lakhs and total interest is 25 lakhs so now balance 9 lakh investment income 
नाइन लैख आउटर कॉलम ट्वेंटी फाइव लैख मैम आपने अलग अलग क्यों लिखे क्योंकि रूपी डिनोमिनेटेड बॉन्ड्स जो है ना दे आर टैक्सेबल लाइक एट यू कैन से दे आर टैक्सेबल एट फाइव परसेंट एंड रेस्ट ऑल आर टैक्सेबल एट ट्वेंटी परसेंट इनकम एंड एक्सपेंसिस दे हैव गिवन एक्सपेंसिस फिफ्टी थाउजेंड दैट इज नॉट अलाउड कोई रिलेटेड एक्सपेंस डिडक्ट नहीं होगा चलो इसके बाद क्या है आपका लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन सेल ऑफ सिक्योरिटीज जस्ट गो ऑन राइटिंग एवरीथिंग फ्रॉम द प्रॉब्लम एवरीवन इज फॉलोइंग इन द क्लास आस्क मी इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट कॉस्ट ऑफ इक्विजेशन मैम ये तो लॉन्ग टर्म है लेकिन कोई इंडेक्स बेनिफिट नहीं है कुछ नहीं है तो सेल माइनस परचेज वी विल राइट ट्वेंटी एट लैक एंड हाउ मच इज द इनकम दैट वी विल राइट नेक्स्ट इज शॉर्ट टर्म शॉर्ट टर्म एस टी टी पेड शॉर्ट टर्म में एस टी टी पेड है तो सेक्शन हंड्रेड एंड इलेवन ए होंगे दे आर स्पेसिफिकली टैक्सेबल एट फिफ्टीन परसेंट तो उसका सेल कंसिडरेशन थर्टीन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड माइनस कॉस्ट ऑफ एक्विजेशन एट लैक्स करेक्ट जस्ट वी आर मेकिंग अ लिस्ट के फॉरन इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स वॉट ऑल इनकम दे कैन हैव नेक्स्ट वॉट इट इज equity shares of a private company will be short term but these are not listed std not paid sale proceeds how much it is Nine lakh twenty five thousand minus the cost of acquisition, that is four lakh eighty five thousand. Four lakh forty thousand. Are you all with me? Hundred and fifteen eighty. Me. What is the income of this rupee denominated bond? Sixteen lakhs. Other income investments nine lakhs. एंड लॉन्ग टर्म जो आ रहा है वो ट्वेंटी फोर लैक्स शॉर्ट टर्म जो आ रहा है वो एट लैक्स शॉर्ट टर्म नॉट लिस्टेड जो आ रहा है दैट इज फोर फोर्टी ओके राइट सो दिस इज द टोटल इनकम ऑफ द फॉरन इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स एंड नाउ डू द टोटल इनकम एंड कैलकुलेट द टैक्स कितना आ रहा है इनकम हाउ मच यू ऑल आर गेटिंग टोटल इनकम हम्म यस सिक्सटी वन लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड क्या चेक थर्टी सिक्स क्यों आ रहा है देखो कहीं कुछ गलत तो नहीं लिखा आपने चेक करो स्क्रीन से पूछो कुछ डाउट है तो
very easy level of the problems. Hmm. So it's a foreign institutional investors. Check the rate if you want. Keep your textbook open huh, where the rates are given. And we have calculated the total income. Now let us calculate the tax on it. Computation of tax. No problem. There's a silly mistake. Correct it. No problem. Computation of the tax. Chill. Rupee denominated bonds. I always said rupee denominated bonds mein TDSB 5% katta hai, tax B 5%. 16 lakhs into 5%. 80,000. Other income on investments that is nine lakhs. Usko tax karenge routine me twenty percent pay one lakh eighty thousand. Fir STT charge ki hai short term capital gain. STT paid. To fir section hundred and fifteen a ke jab se. कितना tax लगना चाहिए fifteen percent correct eight lakh pay fifteen percent one lakh twenty thousand Hmm. Now there is long term capital gain, but they didn't say it is securities and all. So we will not take it as 120, but routine long term capital gain under section 115 B A. Long term capital gain. Kitna hai long term capital gain? 24 lakhs. Ten percent long term capital gain paid ten percent normal income twenty percent STT paid short term hai to fifteen percent ab kya bacha iske alawa non listed shares hmm? 4,40,000. Other STT. Other short term capital gain. Kitna hai aapka? 440. Thirty percent. One lakh thirty two thousand. Total karo. Tally with my total. All right. Very good. Very good. Tax. It's very easy. Tax payable. I know some rates you'll have to remember. 7,52,000. Health and education says. Seven lakh fifty two thousand seven lakh eighty two zero eighty. Hmm. 
you have to write a note here no indexation benefit long term hmm? section 115 bd mein no basic exemption no chapter 6a deduction that's all Yeah, surcharge will come fifteen percent, but now this is in uh, company, no foreign institution and investors. Okay, so it will come when the income crosses one crore. Abi one crore kahan cross hui hai income? What happened? Huh? Income kitni hai? Sixty one lakh forty thousand. Huh? It's not an individual. Foreign institutional investors is like bulk may they invest, they form an incorporation. It's like a company who's investing in bulk in India. So if it's 50,000,000, one crore cross, then the search will be 10% and after that it is this is a company, no? That to foreign company. So, in case surcharge 2%, 5%, but it won't be here because income didn't cross 1 crore. 1 crore cross, then it will be surcharge. Only in case of individual surcharge is applicable after 50 lakhs. Nice and clear to all of you. This is the second kind of variety and very important and weightage is 8 marks. 28 problem. Whole we have completed. Check it here once. Ye dekho, yaan bhi dekh lo. BAD applicable to whom? Foreign institutional investors or specified fund. Okay. So income on securities is taxable in routine at 20%. Here go. Short term capital gain on shares at 15%. Other short term capital gain at 30%. Long term capital gain at 10%. Other long term capital gain. Hmm. Jo foreign institution investors ke liye hota hai khas. 20% other income. Specified fund ki ho income hai to 10%. Or interest 5%, 190 per Rupee denominated bonds. <clears throat> I made you write this search ad. That is for if the way they invest in India is individuals and all. Otherwise, surcharge for the company is. Hmm. Clear? Is this problem easy? Yesterday, we did non-resident sportsmen. Related concept, 115 BA and BBA, sorry, and related problems, three kind of income. Today, we have picked up this foreign institution investors. Let us do one more problem related to this and it will be more clear. Twenty two, okay, twenty three, okay, twenty four, twenty five. Homework I have checked. Twenty seven, I need to do whatever. Twenty nine, exactly same. I think this you all should do as homework. Star income notified FII derived income interest received on investment rupee denominated bonds five percent ke rate se tax hoga. Other income on securities twenty percent. Expenses are not allowed. Sale of the securities. Purchase.
bonds they have purchased in 18 and sold in 23. So what it will be? Long term. Correct. And listed shares. Ye bhi long term. Bonds or debentures. Ye bhi long term. Thik hai. 29th problem. One minute and let us decide. Ki bonds if they have purchased in 18 and they have sold. July 18, July 19, July. So this is long term capital gain. Listed shares holding period is more than one year. एक और ऐड कर दो इसमें अनलिस्टेड शेयर्स अनलिस्टेड शेयर्स 18 12 21 को खरीदे 270 9th जुलाई 22 को नाउ दिस इज वन विद इन वन ईयर शॉर्ट टर्म सो दैट यू नो ऑल लॉन्ग टर्म शॉर्ट टर्म ऑल द एक्सपेंसेस आर कवर्ड Clear? Chalo. Let us do 29th problem. I think this, even if it is not a homework, we can hona to chahiye homework, but am nahi kar rahe homework. Some of you are doing, some of you are not doing. Isko abhi kar lete hai, but saath mein karenge thoda. Three. When I'm moving the page, it is going up and down. Chalo, continue doing in your notebook. 29th problem now in class. Same kind of problem can be asked for 8 marks. I don't know what's wrong with the screen today. One second. Let us start doing this problem now in class, problem number 29th. Hope you all have already started, right? This is again section 115 AD when foreign institutional investors or they come and invest in India and that to in specified funds category 1 and 2 and all. Then at what rate they have to pay the tax? Rupee denominated bonds 5%. Other income 20%. Short term capital gain on shares 15%. Other short-term capital gain, 30%. Long-term capital gain on shares which are listed and all, 10%. Okay? Right. So, like this, we have to decide and solve the problem. Let's go do it again. First, you have to calculate the income and then you have to calculate the tax. Okay? So don't do it in all that rush ki samajh mein nahi hai ki kya karna hai. Compute the total income and the tax liability. Quick, quick, quick. Chalo, let us start. Computation of income of star incorporation and it is a foreign institutional investor theek hai shuru karte hain saath mein what kind of income they have got rupee denominated bond interest on rupee denominated bonds how much they have got that income 8 lakh 50000 outer column had it been two, three varieties and all, I would have taken it. Ki ye hai. Aur bhi hai. 
interest on security so definitely we can write these two in inner column and then write the total in our outer column that would look better all interest income last problem they give total interest 25 lakhs out of that rupee denominated ko kyun alag rakhna hai kyunki it is taxable at 5% remaining interest on securities kitna hai aapka 17 lakh 32000 this is taxable at 20% and here in bracket you should write they have given you expenses related to this income 26000 not allowed either you write here and finish off dear students or you have to write a note ab wo note what likhne mein aur time lagega to better hai ki yahi kar lo 25 lakh 82000 chalo now bonds of land limited bonds of the land limited it's a long term capital gain long term capital gain okay kitna hai dekho sale consideration 47 lakhs i'm just writing in brief aap exam mein pura likhna cost of acquisition और यहाँ पे लिखो नो इंडेक्सेशन इंडेक्सेशन है तो भी कुछ भी नहीं मिलेगा यहाँ बेनिफिट हाउ मच इज द कॉस्ट फोर्टी सेवन में यू सोल्ड द बॉन्ड्स थर्टी टू सो इट इज फिफ्टीन लैक लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन ऑन बॉन्ड्स नेक्स्ट इज लिस्टेड शेयर्स यू हैव सोल्ड ओके दिस लिस्टेड शेयर्स लिस्टेड है अनलिस्टेड है चेंज द डेट ऑफ परचेज टू ट्वेल्थ जून ट्वेंटी टू करो उसको शॉर्ट टर्म ही लेंगे अब हम लॉन्ग टर्म एक हो गया शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन ऑन लिस्टेड शेयर एस टी टी भी पेड है ओके तो सेल कंसिडरेशन कितना है वाई डेट इट इज लिस्टेड जून ट्वेंटी टू यू हैव परचेज एंड जनवरी ट्वेंटी थ्री यू हैव सोल्ड सो सेल कंसिडरेशन इज ट्वेल्व लैक फोर्टी थाउजेंड cost of acquisition is 7 lakh 80000 so how much you all are getting the capital gain 4 lakh 60000 okay now again the last one unlisted shares i have added this now those who have not written can write unlisted shares of say mass limited when did you purchase these shares december 21 and july 22 you have sold and these are unlisted unlisted ke liye holding period should be at least more than 2 years theek hai so here it is sale consideration again pura likhna hai aapko sale consideration How much is the sale consideration? Are you feeling, ma'am? Just copy करना है exam में और इतना scoring है. हाँ, but देखने में problem थोड़े बड़े हैं. You have to be careful about the rates of each dates of each. Four lakh sixty eight thousand. That's it, right? What is the total income? Of this foreign institution investors, four lakh sixty-eight thousand plus four sixty. How much you all are getting? Answer faster than me. Sab log calculate karo. Puri class galat calculate kar rahi hai. Aap hi calculation karke bolo. How much you all are getting? Fifty lakh ten thousand. Yes, very correct. Thank you. Chalo now. let us do the computation of the tax liability
computation of the tax liability. Hmm. Let us compute the tax for each one now. On interest on rupee denominated bonds. Jo rupee denominated bonds hai. How much they are? 8,50,000. So always they are taxable at 5% and TDS is also deducted on that. If anyone is getting confused, some of you have joined late. 115 AD list pura diya hai aapko. Ki kya income kaise tax hoogi? Dekh lo. Interest on other investments. Some more investment foreign institutional investors have done. Look at the screen. 17,32,000. On this, no investment related expense will be allowed, but this will be taxable at the rate of 20%. 17,32,000 into 20%, 346, 400. Chalo, ye do ho gaya aapka rupee denominated bonds or interest on other investment. Ab baat kis ki hai Long term capital gain. Long term capital gain is taxable at 10%. Okay, these are not 112 ki aap ek lakh ka exemption de. So, long term capital gain on bonds, long term capital gain on bonds. So, that is coming to long term capital gain on bonds is 15 lakhs into 10%. That is 1,50,000. After that, it is short-term capital gain. Short-term capital gain is what we have calculated. Short-term capital gain is listed as 4,60,000. Short-term capital gain on listed shares. 4,60,000 into 15%. 460 into 15%. That will come to 69,000. And short term capital gain on unlisted shares. Jampi apne STT and all you have not paid. The last one. 4,68,000. Other short term capital gain is taxable at 30%. Okay, because it's a foreign institutional investor, you can't treat it. As a individual. So, for slab rate pay karlo, aisa nahi hai. 4,60,000 into 30%. 1,40,400. So, what is gross total income? Seven forty-eight three hundred is your uh, sorry not gross total income since then we have gross total income to for ho gaya and there are no chapter six a deductions allowed that's why I directly wrote this list as total income koi expense allowed nahi hai koi index allowed nahi hai koi chapter six a deductions allowed nahi hai and ma'am can we go by our normal no yesterday I have taught you one capital gain scheme which was optional today this is mandatory. So, what is your tax liability? Your tax liability is 7,48,000. Usme health and education says add karo 4%. So, aapka aega 29,932. 29, 748,300 plus 29,932. That is 778,232. Thirty. Done. Eight marks problem. Tell me. Yesterday I have done two, three very good problems for the 
uh, entertainers and sports players. Today, we are concentrating on foreign institutional investors who do bulk investment. Rupee-denominated bonds, we government ka hai. They want to encourage. They say, please come and invest. Only 5% will be taxed or wo bhi TDS ke form mein deduct ho jayega. TDS rates tomorrow. Tomorrow, I will teach you the TDS rate. That time, I'll make that more clear. Okay. Any doubt here or all clear? Last one in this same category, dear students. Ek aur karte hai, phir complete ho jayega aapka. Second. Hmm. 30th problem. Following, following data is furnished by Mr. Sharath, a non-resident and Indian origin. Okay, right? So here, long-term capital gain is arising on transfer of foreign exchange asset. Okay, so this is section 115. Okay, jo optional wala ki, agar aapne uh, foreign currency mein kharida hai, then you can take the similar exemption. So long-term capital gain is directly computed and given ready. Okay, now, Expenditure wholly and exclusively in incurred in connection with the transfer. It is allowed to be deducted. Okay. If not considered above. Expenditure sale consideration say related expense to allowed hai na? Kalam ne dekha tha. Now, interest on deposits held with the public company. Okay. That is 5 lakh 90,000. Very well taxable here. Hmm. Interest on government securities. Okay. That is over uh, foreign institutional investors. Abhi routine hai. Interest on government securities. Okay. Government securities ke baare mein an interest and deposit sells with the private company. Okay. Then interest on deposits with the public company is 260. Okay. Other than this, Saving and investments they have done. Saving and investment where they have done. Investment in notified savings referred to on 30th of March. And investment in the public limited. Okay. So now what is happening? Chapter 6 deductions and all they don't get. But if they sell the shares which they have acquired as foreign exchange asset, then under section 115F, please pause and recollect what you have done yesterday. If you have sold one shares, you can buy another shares and get an exemption provided those next shares holding period should be three years and you should have acquired it within six months from the date of transfer. Or TDS being ka jo bhi kata hai, total figure aapko de diya hai ki TDS itna hai. Now compute the tax payable refund due and all. Okay. Under 115 BAC. Thik hai. Dekh lete hai isko kaise karna hai. And related to this all uh, income and details and all are given. Hmm. Let us check this very quickly. TDS sections, I'll tell you tomorrow. Kal karenge. Ajo, yet I have to teach you other sections also in the table. I will say, Abhi after completing these two, we have already finished with these 115 AD we have done. Now in routine, if you're having this incomes, Okay, what did we learn? One second. Huh? Yeah. Dekho, ye convertible foreign exchange may you have purchased the asset. And through that you have got investment income also. This I said 
really now nri hai he should be a non resident indian okay so in this problem they have clearly said that he is a non resident and of indian origin very good he has specified as a shares debentures and he has sold them koi deduction kuch allowed nahi hai but he has sold them and invested to jo bhi investment income hai it will be taxable at what rate 20% other income लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन क्या रेट से टैक्स होगा टेन परसेंट और अदर इनकम जो है वो रूटीन आपका नॉर्मल इनकम है तो टैक्स रेट्स कल आपको लिखा था ना यहाँ पे नॉर्मल इनकम टैक्स रेट शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन लिस्टेड है तो फिफ्टीन परसेंट नाउ हियर इफ यू रिमेम्बर इफ यू ओपन योर दिस पेज आई है You have sold the shares or debentures which you have purchased in the foreign currency as a specified asset. फॉरन करेंसी में आपने खरीदा है एंड सेलिंग दैट यू हैव परचेज अनादर शेयर एंड डिवेंचर्स इन द सेम फॉर्म ओके देन इट इज एग्जाम नॉन रेसिडेंट हैज ट्रांसफर्ड लॉन्ग टर्म फॉरन एक्सचेंज असेट एंड हैज विद इन अ पीरियड ऑफ सिक्स मंथ फ्रॉम द डेट ऑफ ट्रांसफर दिस इज टॉट इन इंटर इन कैपिटल इन चैप्टर ऑल्सो घर बेच के घर ले रहे हैं तो विद इन वन ईयर फ्रॉम द डेट ऑफ ट्रांसफर ले लेना है चार साल के बाद लोग हैं इफ यू से गिव मी एग्जामेशन नो वन इज गोइंग टू गिव सो यू हैव सोल्ड सम शेयर्स यू हैव टू परचेज अनादर शेयर्स विद इन सिक्स मंथ्स फ्रॉम द डेट ऑफ ट्रांसफर इन्वेस्ट होल और पार्ट ऑफ द नेट कंसिडरेशन इन द सेम स्पेसिफाइड असेट मतलब आपने जो भी शेयर्स या जो सेल किए हैं ना वैसे ही ले लो आप ओके देन कॉस्ट ऑफ न्यू असेट एंड ऑल वो प्रपोर्शनेट होना चाहिए आई होप यू ऑल रिमेम्बर so now come back to this example tomorrow i will complete this ha huh? tds aur jo bhi reh gaye usko kal kar lenge one second yeah i was here see mr sharath is a non resident and he is a person of indian origin so now we should know ki which income is taxable where and when did he sell the shares july 22 to july 22 se 6 months karo yahan pe likh do aapko hona to August, September, October, November, December, January. Am I right? Thirty-first January, twenty-three. तक खरीद लो जो खरीदना है आपको. Hmm. January twenty-three तक purchase whatever you want. ठीक है. So now here. they have purchased in march 23 investment in some notified saving to wo to not eligible hai jo bhi karna tha 6 mahine ke andar karna tha investment in shares in public company okay one second no One second. One second. This should be March twenty three. Sorry, and this should also be December twenty three. Then only. It's not allowed. Are you getting? आपने कब लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन असेट का सेल किया है वेन डिड यू सेल इट इन जुलाई ट्वेंटी टू ओके तो मार्च ट्वेंटी टू तो उसके पहले बेचने के पहले कैसे करोगे Please change the two dates. March twenty three and March twenty three. So you have sold the investment in July twenty two. Within six months, you have to purchase like bonds fifty four EC and all. Also within six months from the date of transfer, you have to purchase. Okay. So instead of buying it within six months, you have purchased it in March. Okay. So March twenty three me or December twenty three me. So no, it will not be taxable. You will not get any benefit. 
now just you have to compute the capital gain of your tax hai refund hai because this time they have given you the tax when tds ka amount also so it's a simple problem let us do it hmm. problem number 30 computation of income of Mr. Sharad, and he's in NRI, and we are doing it for previous year twenty two twenty three. One or two date corrections are there. I have told you. I hope clear. Chalo, let us write one after the another. First is capital gain. Long term capital gain. Already they have computed and given you ready. Long term capital gain on transfer of. Specified asset, which has specified asset, eh? Just go transfer. Okay, you are getting the long term capital gain. Now related to that, expenses are they allowed? They didn't consider, but are they allowed? Yes. I want to repeat for those who are doing it for the first time, or for say, ask any kind of interest on investment. Jo milta na, on that no expenditures are allowed. Basic exemption not allowed. Chapter six A deductions ATC to ATU not allowed. But capital gain at the related expenses can be deducted, and you are getting an outer column five lakh seventy thousand. Chal. Now, other income on investments. Income from other source me chalte hain. To long term capital gain jo bhi hai apka. इंटरेस्ट ऑन डिपॉजिट्स विद प्राइवेट लिमिटेड प्राइवेट लिमिटेड नहीं है बाद में देखेंगे मतलब वो डायरेक्टली आप आउटर कॉलम में लिख सकते हो इंटरेस्ट ऑन डिपॉजिट विद सम प्राइवेट लिमिटेड कोर्स दिस इज योर रूटीन इनकम अदर इनकम तो अदर इनकम कैसे टैक्स होगी रूटीन दिस इज अगेन वी हैव गॉन टू ये सेक्शन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन वाला नेक्स्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट इनकम बिकॉज ऑल द इन्वेस्टमेंट इनकम आर टैक्सीबल एट ट्वेंटी परसेंट सो नाउ यू हैव इन्वेस्टमेंट इनकम इंटरेस्ट ऑन गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज इंटरेस्ट ऑन गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज हाउ मच नाइंटी फाइव थाउजेंड इंटरेस्ट ऑन डिपॉजिट विथ public company 2 lakh 60000 3 lakh 55000 plus 590 plus 570 how much you all are getting total income See, there is no chapter six a deduction, so no point of writing the gross total income directly. Total income, long term capital gain is already computed. In that, if you invest in similar shares, you get a deduction. But यहाँ पे कोई deduction नहीं है. Separately, एक note one लिखना पड़ेगा जो हम बाद में लिखाएंगे. Income from other sources में related to investments, these specified assets, जो public sector है, deposits है, shares है. उससे रिलेटेड इनकम व्हाई आई हैव केप्ट इट सेपरेट बिकॉज दैट्स टैक्सेबल एट 20% एंड व्हाट अबाउट अदर देन दिस इनकम एट योर नॉर्मल टैक्स रेट ठीक है नॉर्मल नॉर्मल टैक्स रेट चल कंप्यूटेशन ऑफ टैक्स लायबिलिटी Computation of tax liability. First, you have got long-term capital gain. Jo specified asset. Those who are not getting, go to yesterday's class and check. Agar specified asset hai, to long-term capital gain pe tax kitna hai? Ten percent. Investment income ke twenty percent. 
अदर देन दिस नॉर्मल सो लॉन्ग टर्म स्पेसिफाइड असेट पे अगर आपको कैपिटल गेन है फाइव लैक्स सेवेंटी थाउजेंड ऑन दिस हाउ मच इज द टैक्स टेन परसेंट फिफ्टी सेवन थाउजेंड ये हो गया आपका एक ओके नाउ इन्वेस्टमेंट इनकम इन्वेस्टमेंट इनकम थ्री लैख फिफ्टी फाइव थाउजेंड इज ऑल टैक्सेबल अंडर ट्वेंटी परसेंट हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन वाला सेक्शन देख लो जाके राइट द पेज नंबर रेफरेंस नंबर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रेफर सेवेंटी वन थाउजेंड अब आपका क्या आएगा और बैलेंस नॉर्मल इनकम बैलेंस इनकम स्लैब रेट्स बिकॉज ही इज एन एन आर आई बट देन ही इज एन इंडिविजुअल फाइव नाइनटी तो फाइव नाइनटी पे स्लैब रेट पे कैसे टैक्स निकलता है Will he get basic exemption if he is an NRI? Yes, but even if he is a senior citizen, he will not get three lakh and five lakh basic exemption. Two lakh fifty thousand he will get. How much? How much? How much? First two lakh fifty thousand pay tax. Nil. Then next two lakh fifty thousand pay five percent twelve thousand five hundred. And a five lakh ke upar jo ninety thousand hai. Five to ten lakhs. It is twenty percent. So ninety thousand ka twenty percent comes to eighteen thousand. So what is the tax rate? Thirty thousand five hundred. So what is the total tax? Fifty seven thousand plus seventy one thousand five hundred. Fifty seven thousand. One lakh. Anyone is having any doubt in the tax rate? थोड़े से tax rate हैं आपको याद करने पड़ेंगे I know as a teacher is easy for me to teach but I am trying to help you out की कैसे याद रखेंगे That's why I didn't yet go to the other columns which I have to teach you now. मैंने सिर्फ यहीं पे restrict करके कराया आपको Total tax is one fifty eight five hundred. Now that health and education says is how much? But already they have TDS over here. Already Sharad has paid TDS. Kitna? Check in the C point. One lakh eighty three eight hundred. But the tax is coming to how much? One sixty four eight forty. Refund eighteen nine sixty. Check and tell me is it clear? No time making you right. Actually, they could have given how to compute the long term capital gain also routine. Ma'am, index lenge, bilkul bhi nahi lenge. Sale consideration, related expense, net sale consideration minus cost this. And if they have invested in six months, then hundred and fifteen F we would have given exemption. But they didn't invest in the six months, so we are not giving any exemption in the long term. And income from other sources, if you have put the money in any private company and all, it will be taxable in rupee. But if you have put specified asset funding, then income related to government securities app, deposit with a public company, ये सब twenty percent से tax होंगे. Okay, right. Write down a note for this. Note one. Long term capital gain on. specified asset 
you know, where you have invested in dollars and all foreign exchange, convertible foreign exchange. So the long term capital gain on specified asset is not reinvested within six months from date of transfer. Long-term capital gain on specified asset is not reinvested within six months from the date of transfer. Hence, no exemption. Hence, no exemption given above under section 115F, over and out. Achha hai, clear hai. Yet in between one or two questions are left related to business connection and all. But pehle ab table dekhenge. Baki pure sections abhi aur baki hai table. I have to teach you more of the table, TDS sections. Tomorrow we will complete this chapter. How to recover the tags and all little bit procedural part is there. We'll do that. Quality good problems we have done yesterday and today. Keep revising that. Practice the same problem. Or wo jo company wala problem hai na, active business outside India. Wo agar aega to as it is, they will give for eight months. I've closed the screen until now. Everything is clear or not? Hmm? Chalo, aajau, textbook mein. Come to a table. Thoda sa, I'll scroll up more little ahead. Ye recovery of tax, TDS, ye kal ka topic hai, kal karenge. And tomorrow I will shortly take up the problems for business connection, but I want to promise this ki you all will read and come. Do you remember these problems? Huh? Kaun sa hai ye? First proviso. First proviso to section 48, wherein jo bhi aapne capital gain you have got in the rupees, first you convert it into dollars, final capital gain at the buying rate and so on. Now yesterday we have seen a, seen a scheme that is optional. But ab ye to pure compulsory sections hai. Okay? Right. Chalo, let us continue in the table. Uh, more sections are there which mandatorily are to be taxed in the same way. And that's the only reason I am taking it so slowly because as a teacher it is easy. Pura table ek din mein pada do. Huh? But as a student you have to learn it. So we have already finished with the part. Uh, and I want all of you to write it in top. These sections what I'm teaching you right now or yesterday also we have done non-resident sportsmen, non-resident sports association. Today I started the class with foreign institutional investors. Hey na? 115 AD. These are all mandatory sections. Likho. Next is no basic exemption. Koi bhi basic exemption nahi milega in ko. From these specific incomes, they will not get. Of course, from the normal other income, we have given the basic exemptions. And chapter 6A deductions will also not be given. Chapter 6A deductions will also not be given. Except royalty. Ek royalty ka aega, usme milta hai. I'll teach you now. Finish writing. Shall I start reading? Are you all with me and clear? Dekho, 115 ADs, foreign institutional investors or uh, here it is, why is it missing? Actually, it is few uh, qualified investors also. And if they put the money in those specified funds, category one and two, which are permitted and all, then income on securities they will receive and short-term, long-term capital gain, okay? So short-term capital gain, if they are listed, 15%. Other short-term capital gain, 30%. 
लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन टेन परसेंट अदर इनकम ट्वेंटी परसेंट स्पेसिफाइड फंड कितना है टेन परसेंट है एंड इंटरेस्ट अंडर वन नाइनटी फोर एल डी यहाँ पे लिख दो ना रूपी डिनोमिनेटेड बॉन्ड्स रूपी डिनोमिनेटेड बॉन्ड्स है तो फाइव परसेंट वी सॉल टू थ्री प्रॉब्लम फॉर दिस एंड देन इट शुड बी क्लियर टू यू ओके राइट ना no other expenditure is allowed chapter 6a deductions are not allowed in tax benefit but yes they have to file a return this is done now this also we have done but i want to revise it once again non resident sportsman or entertainer or uh, all and they get three kind of income participation in any game in india advertisement any may be related to sports ya tube light ka ad hai ya kuch bhi ad hai contribution of articles relating to sports in newspaper in that case they have to pay the tax match referees are not called as sportsmen okay so they have to pay the tax on all these income at 20% is this clear to all of you right and now apart from this we have uh, no other income then he need not furnish the return If he has got winning from notaries and on which is taxable at thirty percent, or TDS कहाँ deduct होता है one ninety four B में यहाँ add करो TDS कहाँ deduct होता है इनके लिए one ninety four B में तब फिर return file करना जरूरी होगा yesterday we have solved the question okay last one now Indian company this time Indian company is receiving dividend. Excluding dividend covered under two twenty two e from specified foreign. One second, huh? One second, one second. This will keep pending because from this year specified foreign companies in which we are having more than six twenty six percent, fifteen percent. i am very sure this is not there by mistake it is so many changes are there we try to do so let us keep this pending i'll clarify tomorrow aa jao yahan pe ab pehle ke sections dekhte hain first table right from the beginning non resident okay first table i'm on page number 39 he is getting dividend income interest on notified infrastructure bonds ha wo hi rupee denominated bonds और गवर्नमेंट से मिल रहा है इंटरेस्ट इंडियन कंसर्न और मनी बोर्ड इन फॉरेन करेंसी देन इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द नेचर एंड टू द एक्सटेंड रेफर्ड इन 194 एलसी एलडी एंड ऑल इट विल बी फाइव परसेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बॉन्ड्स पे जो इंटरेस्ट मिल रहा है एंड ऑल दैट इज टैक्सेबल एट फाइव परसेंट ऑल द अदर इनकम Other interest and dividend income NRI is getting. It will be taxable at twenty percent. And then routine note uh, business aid deductions are available. Chapter six A deductions not available except ATLA, which can be claimed if the unit is uh, located in IFSC. You know what is IFSC? International Financial Service Center. It is called as IFSC. Man, if the unit is located in IFSC. then they get a deduction under atla so that is available otherwise no other and no need to file the return fir se ek bar non resident in routine if you are getting income related to infra bonds rupee denominated bonds then 5% all the other income of non resident dividend interest and all that is taxable at 20% theek hai right non resident <clears throat> रॉयल्टी और फीस और टेक्निकल सर्विस नाउ ऑलरेडी आई हैव टॉट यू रॉयल्टी इन स्पेसिफाइड रेट्स आल्सो टेन परसेंट हाँ भी पढ़ाया आपको सो रॉयल्टी और फीस फॉर टेक्निकल सर्विसेज अदर देन इनकम कवर्ड अंडर फोर्टी फोर डी ए रिसीव एज पर अग्रीमेंट विद गवर्नमेंट हाँ रॉयल्टी भी बोलते हैं और एफ टी एस भी बोलते हैं फीस फॉर टेक्निकल सर्विसेस देन हाउ मच इट इज टैक्सेबल टेन परसेंट ओके and only in this boldly i have written chapter 6a deductions are available for example for royalty and all 80 rrb deduction is there to wo milega fir 
अब यहाँ पे ना एक रॉयल्टी के दो टाइप के इनकम्स हैं। आई वॉन्ट ऑल ऑफ यू टू राइट ओके इफ देर इज नो पी इन इंडिया यू नो फॉरेन कंपनी हु इज रेंडरिंग दिस रॉयल्टी नॉन रेसिडेंट जो भी है नॉन रेसिडेंट कंपनी भी हो सकता है नॉन रेसिडेंट इंडिविजुअल भी हो सकता है बट इफ ही इज हैविंग नो पी इन इंडिया इंडिया में कोई पी नहीं है उसका तो फिर दिस टेन परसेंट एंड सेक्शन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन ए है ना ये अवेलेबल है अगर उसका पी है फॉरेन कंपनी है उसका पी है और पी जो है वो पूरा टैक्स पे कर रहा है उसके बिहाफ पे पी इन इंडिया देन सेक्शन फोर्टी फोर डी ए इज अवेलेबल एंड देन रॉयल्टी टैक्सेबल एज नॉर्मल टैक्स रेट सी लिसन ऑल ऑफ यू एन आर आई हैविंग पीई इन इंडिया इज एज गुड एज हैविंग ब्रांच इन इंडिया तो फिर जो भी इंडियन ब्रांच है उस पर रूटीन में जो भी उनको टैक्स एप्लीकेबल है इफ द नॉन रेसिडेंट इज एन इंडिविजुअल स्लैब रेट इफ इट्स अ फॉरिन कंपनी फोर्टी परसेंट वो टैक्स लगेगा समझ में आ रहा है नहीं I want to repeat. If NRI, are you all with me? And respond if you are following or not. NRI, non-resident. I am saying I, but actually it's non-resident. Non-resident, if he is having P in India, then let them pay the tax on royalty and all in the normal tax rate. But if the non-resident is not having any P in India, then they can pay ten percent tax here. Only Chapter Six A deduction is available. ठीक है? and in note 1 where such agreement is in indian concern agreement is approved by central government and all for the timing in force okay right overseas financial organization okay now what is overseas financial organization niche note 2 mein definition diye it means any fund institution association or body whether incorporated or not established under law of country outside india which has entered into an arrangement for investment in india with public sector banks public financial institutions or mutual fund and such arrangement is approved by sebi ons overseas financial organizations are organizations from outside india and they have been registered in the country outside india and they have a tie up with the public sector banks institute mutual funds and through them they are investing the money in india okay who overseas organization now how much tax they need to pay long term capital gain arising from transfer of units of uti purchased in the foreign exchange 10% tax they have to pay no indexation koi benefit nahi milega non resident this time non resident is getting interest on notified currency bonds dividend on gdrs now what is gdrs GDR the full form is global depository receipt. So long term capital gain arising on transfer of such bonds. एक तो GDR के through regular income होगी interest और dividend और फिर transfer के through long term capital gain होगा non resident investing in GDRs. These GDRs, ADRs, these are there. You can just Google example of GDRs and it will give you FM में आप ये सब terms पढ़ते हैं. global depository receipts <clears throat> so whatever is the income of gdrs to an nri through india it is taxable at 10% and no benefits are available and last one this one i am doing it right now this i want to keep pending i'll surely check and let you know i'm very sure it has actually been deleted nahi hai section 115 vbd is not there but still once i'll cross check and then Section hundred and fifteen ACA resident individual okay dividend on GDRs. Now this is the only section where you are resident individual in India, and you have got the dividend on GDRs of Indian company engaged in some specified knowledge based industry and all in the form of ESOP. Employees को ESOP में GDRs मिल गए तो अब GDRs में dividend भी आएगा. कैपिटल गेन भी आएगा तो क्या रेसिडेंट इंडिविजुअल के हाथ में टैक्स होगा हाँ टेन परसेंट 
और कोई बेनिफिट अवेलेबल नहीं है बट यस एस एस सी हैज टू फाइल द रिटर्न कहा अगर आप प्रेसिडेंट इंडिविजुअल हैं और जी मिल रहा है अगर आप फॉरेन इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स हैं तो रिटर्न फाइल करो एंटरटेनमेंट और उसमें तो नॉट रिक्वायर्ड सो लाइक दिस एस एस सी मस्ट बी एम्प्लॉय ऑफ द कंपनी और इट्स सब्सिडरी तो ये क्या हो रहा है कि आप इंडियन हो बट यू हैव गॉट जी डी एस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ई सॉफ एंड इन दीज जी डी एस वट एवर इनकम यू हैव रिसीव इट्स गोइंग टू बी टैक्सेबल ओके सो दिस इज द लिस्ट एंड जस्ट री रीड द लिस्ट अगेन एंड इट विल बी क्लियर टू यू देर आर सम प्रॉब्लम रिलेटेड टू बिजनेस कनेक्शन दैट आई विल टेक इट इन टूमोरोज क्लास and two homeworks are also there that i will check it remind me if you have not done do it today practice it will make it very easier for me if you practice and come those residential status and those problems we have solved in class i have not taken any problem jo aap inter mein bahut kar chuke hain three way like if they'll give you some income and they'll say resident and ordinary resident but not a non resident so income which is received in india yes 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 taxable for all deemed to receive accrued and deemed to accrue these are the four cases ye to sabke liye taxable hai iske alawa kya karna hai sir right so other than this uh, if there is business connection in india then only the first two people will pay the tax resident and resident but not nr will not pay tax so like this i have given you one table check and come the problems and i'll scroll whole material of non resident and any problem any concept you have doubt ask me tomorrow tomorrow is the last day we will be completing non resident saturday and sunday is holiday promise me dtwa is easy chapter i have put the revision video in the youtube watch it twice thrice watch your booster notes and practice the class work that's enough but study material ke bhi thode piche ke jo problems hai mcqs hai dekho and write the exam and next monday we are starting with transfer pricing okay that's all from my side any doubt you all are having no thank you so much when you say thank you for today and thank you that there is a different level of energy going on and thank you so much for trusting us also as a teacher trying to give my best 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 what i can fir bhi koi book mein kahin pe bhi doubt hai non resident click the picture and post it in group right bye bye all of you thank you